Easter Sunday is a very special Sunday in the church calendar and I would imagine that this Easter Sunday was a special, special day in your congregations as you met together and worshipped and celebrated our risen Lord Jesus. It was a particularly special Easter Sunday this year for the Reverend Alistair Duncan, the Transition Minister at St George's Tron Church of Scotland in Glasgow City Centre. Because for Alistair, it marked a year since he had become minister of that church. The history of St George's Tron is well known here, and I don't think it's necessary to go into that situation. But a year down the line, after Alistair had felt very called, Alistair and his wife Ruth had felt a very definite call upon their lives to go into ministry in this church. On Easter Sunday this year, by the end of the evening service, 11 people had stood and affirmed that they wished to become members of St. George's Tron Church of Scotland. And I can say that with all certainty because I was one of the 11 that stood and committed to join this congregation. We are very small in number. 11 is not a large number. Although as we were looking at um, the, 11 the story of the 11 remaining disciples hearing that Jesus was alive again, it felt like a very biblical number. We thought, well, this is a good, this is a good sign, a good start. But Alistair has given me permission to share with you a little bit about the story of St. George's Tron at the moment, some of the things that are happening. And I hope that you will celebrate with us the green shoots that we are seeing. And I hope too, though, that you will pray for us in the challenges that we still face ahead. I want to share a little bit about the ministry. Somebody had said to me, uh, in fact, earlier today, someone said, you know, I don't actually know what's happening. I know that Alistair didn't want to go down the traditional route of an 11 o'clock on a Sunday morning service, but is anything happening? It most definitely is. We have about three services during the week. There's a midweek service on a Wednesday, uh, which usually attracts a congregation of between 15 and 20 folks. There is the evening service, which has been very well attended over the years. That can have anything from, from 20 to up to 60 different folk coming along to it. And quite often, actually, there's a number of ministers come along to that Sunday evening service if they don't have an evening service of their own. But in January this year, Alistair set up Cafe Church, which meets on a Sunday at around half past 12, and we meet for soup and bread, a time of fellowship, and then we go into a time of worship at one o'clock, which um, looks slightly different every, every week. And part of the, the outreach that we're doing with Cafe Church is hoping to attract perhaps students. I think the, the timing at half 12, we figured, well, students will be up, but they might not have eaten yet. So we can provide them some sustenance for their bodies and then some sustenance for their, their souls. And Cafe Church is slowly growing. And again, we've had up to 20 folks coming along to that. Quite often, we will get people who will literally just come off the street. They'll, they'll walk past the automatic doors. The doors will open and they will come in and join us. It's absolutely wonderful. We have a tremendous potential for mission. Um, placed as we are, slap bang in the city centre, placed as we are on Buchanan Street. I think Alistair read a statistic somewhere that over the course of a year, 92 million people make their way up and down Buchanan Street. I'm sure some of this must be repeat business, but seriously, that's a heavy footfall. And that gives us tremendous potential, tremendous challenges too. And we're thinking through this, how do you reach a post-Christian uh, audience? How do you reach a generation who are post-literate, as it were, with the gospel? Uh, we recognise there's a wide variety of people that use Glasgow City Centre. You've got your wee Glasgow women that come in for their shopping on their way up to Watt Brothers. You've got your business community that are there working in office spaces. You've got students, students from um, the Glasgow City College, but also from Caledonian University. You've got all the travellers, all the visitors. You've got Central Station, Queen Street Station, Buchanan Street Station. There's a heavy footfall wide audience and tremendous potential there. And Alistair really does have a vision to create, to make sure the church is open, open for business and open for people to come and to find sanctuary. And we're exploring what that looks like, creating a sanctuary in the city centre. Alistair's working hard to develop partnerships with other organisations, uh, meeting with Glasgow City Mission, Glasgow House of Prayer, Workplace Chaplaincy Scotland, The Healing Room Scotland, Glasgow Street Pastors, more than gold. Lots of conversations, lots of relationships are being built up and again explored as what that, that could look like. For the Commonwealth Games, 
Uh, the church is going to be open for the whole time the games are on. The Scottish Bible Society are going to be using the main sanctuary space. And I think various other organisations will be having events running from the church. And we're keen that the church doors remain open during that time. If you're in Glasgow for the games, come and visit us. We'd love to see you. There's also tre tremendous potential for sharing the space. We've got a brilliant location there. There's a one, it is a wonderful building. And Alistair's keen to see that building used. So if you're looking for a city centre location, please do approach us. But that in itself cre creates demands on time. Uh, there's a lot of administration behind things like that and hosting. Uh, but it's something that we're keen to develop because there is a potential income stream there. So for his highlights, Alistair says he's been a year where he's seen a lot of new connections. He's had the encouragements of a young and a growing congregation, still small, but growing, and lots of opportunities for mission. But the challenges, the prayer points, the things we would love you to continue remembering in your prayers. Alistair says there are a thousand possibilities open to him and open to us at the moment. But as I'm sure you can appreciate, a thousand possibilities is just a little bit too much. What we need to know is, what is it that God wants us to be focusing on? Where are the areas that we should be acting? What is God's will for the church? So please do pray that Alistair and Ruth and the, re the rest of us that are part of the congregation, please do pray that we can discern God's voice in amongst a thousand possibilities. We've also got the challenges of resisting people's expectations as well, sort of trying to think creatively and think out of the box what, what is needed here. And also sharing the load as well. A friend asked me recently, they said, how is this going, this, this new church you've joined? And I said, well, it's two things. I said, it's incredibly exciting to be part of a congregation that's so new, that's so fresh, that you could literally do anything you wanted. I said, but it's also utterly terrifying to know that you are one of 11 and there's no place to hide. There's no coming in and sitting at the back and hoping you can get out that week and no one spotted you there. It's really, it, it's a mixture of excitement and challenge. Thinking about 92 million people, thinking about 11, those are, those are quite very, very different numbers. But at Pentecost last week, Alistair, we're preaching about, uh, preaching about Pentecost, preaching about the Holy Spirit. And Alistair was reminding us that we do not do this on our own. We do not do this on our own power, our own strength. It's God's mission. He reminded us we have to go and make disciples of all nations. This isn't about setting up a new successful church. This is about reaching Glasgow City Centre with the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I hope that having heard some of this today, for those of you that think, well, I haven't heard much of St. George's Tron, is there even anything there? There is. It's small, but it's growing. We want to do more. We've got vision for more. We believe God has called us to do more. And we would appreciate your prayers and support in that.